your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. After pulling up anchor about 7am and waving our goodbyes, we unfurled the headsail and turned off the engines and were setting a slow pace of about three knots. This is it, we're on our own now. It's scary, isn't it? All the way to Indo. Bit emotional last night, wasn't it? Saying goodbye to everyone. Yeah. They're our family. I know. A little it's... salty family. Yeah, it's coming right here. No sooner had I laid out the stack of pancakes for the crew when I spotted a large black dorsal fin off to our port side. Immediately we all rushed on deck to take a closer look and discovered a pod of false killer whales. Yeah. Oh man! How cool is that? Look at here he comes, here he comes. Hello! Hello! I can hear it! He's there talking! They're talking! You gotta talk to them. Oh, they are, they're chatting to each other. Oh they're like, come over here. They're people. massive. They are huge. I can hear them. Oh, hello. They're amazing. Hello. Yeah. Woo! 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 What? No way! Hello. Oh, you are magnificent! They're all coming here. You are beautiful! They cruised through the water towards the bows and we all leant over excitedly talking and waving to them. To our astonishment, we could hear them communicating with their sonar and they even rolled side on to look up at us, a moment I won't easily forget. Look at the size of the baby! Oh. No way. Oh my god, you're so beautiful. Where's the baby? Right there. Yeah. I can just dive under it. Ready? When they surface, oh, they surface. Away. Just keep on looking. Every time that the mum surfaces, the baby jumps. Where'd they go? Oh, they went right out there. Oh, oh that's like went. a dream. I'll go down, buddy. You stay up here. Every time Brody put the rod out, he was on to another tuna. I've got to get it off here. That night, however, he was about to get the fright of his life when he went down to his bathroom and was bitten by a snake. It was a terrifying moment for us as his parents, but we took this video so that we could use it later to try and identify the snake. Initially, we thought it was a tree snake that had stowed away on elusive, but it was later identified as a non-venomous, slaty grey snake. Brody went to go to the bathroom and um, we just heard this, this scream, yell, terrified and he was bitten by a snake in, um, in his bathroom. So we're thinking that a snake's hitched a ride with us from um, the Wessels and yeah, went into his bedroom and anyway, the poor little bugger went down to go to the bathroom and turned the light on and the snake wrapped around his foot and bit him once or twice. We know it bit him definitely once, he said it bit him twice, but it was horrible. It was the worst, one of the worst things we've ever sort of experienced as his parents because we were, you know, 200 miles from anywhere, hey? All the first aid instructions say to call the ambulance. Yeah. We couldn't do that out here. We couldn't even call another boat. There was no one. No. Like, no one. Call the ambulance, they said. You just, all the things. Bandage them, elevate, all this and that. And then the last thing you do is call an ambulance. And we were just so lucky. Had it been a round snake or yeah. something more serious, did you get it? I even put a distress call out on um, the radio and I don't know why I did it. Because nobody could have done anything. I just, I don't know. I was scared, eh? For the little man. We just, we wanted to know that, that there was someone there that we could call on 
and unfortunately the distress call went out for half an hour and nothing, we didn't hear a thing. Ob obviously if it, if it was serious and we thought he was in trouble, we would have turned towards Darwin and, and set off the EPIRB again, you know, whether that would have been enough. We were closely monitoring the situation and we were pretty, like 90% sure it was a tree snake. Um, he didn't have a fever. Where the, where the bite was, there was no venom tracking up his leg. No. We applied the um, bandage pretty quickly and we kept him mobile. As well. I sprayed it with antiseptic. Um, yeah, he was, and he was really calm, which I it think was. helped the situation. Had he been panicking, the heart rate would have been up and. He was incredible, actually. He was a really calm little fella. I don't so, know, a bit of an eye opening moment. So, on a boat for snakes. Yeah, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought 200 miles out in the middle of the ocean you'd get bitten by a snake? Um, yeah, it was just not scary. Not on the plane, they're on the boat. Scary for everyone. Yeah, not on the plane, they're on the boats. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, that happened. Um, we watched him all night. I, I think I slept beside him out here, and Sarah slept on the other side here, and every half an hour I woke him to just check on him, which I think he got the shits with in the end. But it is what it is. We checked his, we were checking his foot, make sure there's no tracking or redness or anything. And in all honesty, he woke up perfectly fine this morning. He was, he was fishing before we were all awake, so. Yeah. Like, like he said now, he's got a cool story to tell. Cool story, he's like, I've got a really cool story to tell. What we call these halfway pizzas. Although we've just passed halfway, so. We're uh, 186 miles or 180 miles from Indonesia, or Somlaki to be exact. And uh, yeah, it, it honestly hasn't been a bad crossing. That that actually looks <laughs> looks so sedate in the camera. But we've had we've had sort of sustained 20 knots um, and only flown the head sail for the whole trip. It's been so fickle though because the wind is straight out of 180 degrees for us so straight out of the southeast but just dead on the tail which means um we've spent all night last night um changing the head sail but yeah no, night one was not very good so fingers crossed night two is a little bit better a little bit calmer. it's a good way to start though with a whole bunch of pizzas <laughs> yummy i'm actually looking forward to getting into um some larky and cracking a beer we don't drink on passage, so I think um, I think it'll be a well-deserved stubby or a home Maybe brew. that's why we sit. Because we're not drinking. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> we don't drink that much. Sarah does, I don't. Do not. I was incredibly nauseous for the whole four-day passage, which I put down to seasickness, but later realised was a reaction to codeine. We're in Indonesian waters. How we're all sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully night two was uneventful, eh? Thank God. No more snake bites. No, I don't think we even did a heading change. Did we? A, a drive? Uh, nope. One before we went to bed, that was it. Some big seas. We did tie it down this morning to prevent it from... Um... Well, we got strong, I think we reported 32 knots. 32 knots and some big seas, but... Going pretty well. We crossed the Indonesian line about Australian waters. 5 a.m. was it? About 4 or 5 o'clock, yeah. So we're only about, about 80, 82 miles from Sumlaki Island. Bring it on, I can't wait to anchor. We won't get there till dark tonight. Yeah. Which is scary because I know there's fads there, so we're all going to be out with torches just to come into the harbour. That's right. not ideal, is it? I, I didn't want to get there in the night, but the first the first day we left was so slow. We, do. we can slow down now, and we'd have to burn another eight hours. Yeah, no. I'm not interested. We just want to get there now. Um, or we throw the spinnaker in 30 knots and get there four hours early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no thanks. I don't want to have a scare I, today. When we get close to some larky, we'll just pull the sail down. Switch the edges on and just spotlights. Ah. Okay. 
There's a flying fish on the tramp. fantastic I can actually put my finger on the actual storm once it finds it and it'll pick it up for me should um, target info tell me what speed the storm's moving at as well so that's but that storm's moving at 34 knots so there's obviously no chance we're gonna outrun it and that's its general trajectory so it should be okay we reefed all the sails in because we can see the gusts are coming I'm so glad we did the sea state's about to get gnarly this will just this will pick up. You watch. It's crazy to see how quickly, like another 10 knots of breeze, can just pick that swell straight up. So it was blowing 18 knots. Now I got 36. So good thing. Good thing we've got sails away. Just just can't hurt to do it, eh?
After four days out on the open sea, the lights of civilization grew nearer and the smells from land grew stronger. Good lucky. It's a bit hard to see anything, isn't it? How weird is the smell? Pungent aroma. Pungent aroma. Smoke. Guano. Guano, whatever you call Smoke, it. Smoke, guano, and what? Rotten bananas. Rotten bananas. <laughs> I can smell cinnamon cigarettes. Thanks for watching and come along for the next instalment when we explore Indonesia.